Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to our subject, Science, Technology, and Society. Today, we will be discussing technology as a way of revealing. Now, as an introduction, let me introduce to you one of the greatest, or let's say, the most prominent uh, person to introduce the technology as a way of revealing. He is no other than the philosopher Martin Heidegger. Now, Martin Heidegger is actually a German philosopher who is best known for his contributions to phenomenology, hermeneutics, and existentialism. He is among the most important and influential philosophers of the 20th century. Now, Heidegger is not against science and technology, but the abuse that human beings or that we humans do to uh, technology and how we disregard nature. Furthermore, Heidegger emphasized the poet names the holy, the philosopher thinks being, the men of science and technology are also aspired by being. Therefore, according to Heidegger, the men of science and technology should not Okay, I would like to emphasize this, should not produce things that will bring progress to man. Now, we will further understand what does Heidegger means when he says that the science and technology should not produce things that will bring progress to man. Now, I want you to... Uh, get to know Heidegger more in his work, The Question of Technology, which is aimed to characterize technology and how human beings relate to it. Now, he argued the importance of understanding not just technology per se, but their essence, a deeper understanding of what technology is. Because no matter what we do, we will always be intertwined with technology. And according to Heidegger, kapag hindi daw natin naunawaan talaga no, yung pinaka-essence ng technology, we will all be in danger. On top of that, according to Heidegger, technology itself is not good or bad. But the problem is that technological thinking, or what he calls calculative thinking, has become the only form of thinking. Now, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng calculative thinking? Just a short background, Heidegger saw that the essence of technology nowadays is enframing. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng enframing? It's also known, according to Heidegger, as gestell. Okay, G -E S-T-E-L-L, Gestell, which means that everything in nature is a standing reserve. Now, Gestell reduces the whole world to manageable reserve. Ibig sabihin, no, we, look, we tend to look at our resources, our nature, our environment, our world as a raw material. And because of that, we tend to reduce no, our world into just uh, simply something that needs to be managed. Now, which can be put to use with the help of calculative thinking. Now, let's say a river is reserved for a power station and a forest is now reserved for a paper factory. Well, in fact, if we look at the river, you know, when we trace our ancestors before, you know, they tend to appreciate, respect, love, nature, let's say the river, the mountains, you know, the forest, they tend to treat and there are some who even uh, worship them because of the blessings and the resources that we receive from them. But now, we just look at these resources, at our environment, at our Mother Earth, as just mere raw material to, let's say, achieve what we desire, no? para matugunan yung ating mga pangangailangan at maibigay no, yung ating mga kailangan sa pang-araw-araw. Now, according to Heidegger, Technology is commonly understood as both a means to an end. And the way we see a means to an end, an instrumental characterization of technology. Remember, before you reach a result, there should be a means, a process, no? And that's how technology works. It serves as an instrument, an aid, a help in order for us to reach a certain result or output. And a human activity, which is actually when we talk about human activity, it's more on the anthropological aspect no, of mankind. Now, for Heidegger, these two notions of technology are actually intertwined. Now, let's now proceed to the definitions of technology according to Heidegger. But before we move on to this, I would like to emphasize that the emergence of Gestell, 
okay, coincides with the appearance of modern technology. Now, according to Heidegger, there was no gestel in ancient Greek. In fact, technology came from the word techne in ancient Greek. Well, uh, was a different phenomenon than, than modern technology. You know, techne, which actually means cunning hand or artful skill. Now, modern technology reveals aletheia, okay? What is aletheia? These are beings in a different way that did, that did poesis and techne in the pre-modern world. Aletheia simply means the truth, no? Modern technology now reveals the truth. Now, based from these, Heidegger was able to construct three definitions of technology. The first one is that technology is not an instrument. Second, technology is not a product of human activity, and technology is the highest danger. Now, we'll uh, briefly discuss each definition. Let's start with technology is not an instrument. Now, please take note that Heidegger strongly opposes the view, okay? He opposed, meaning Counter, ano siya, contra siya, against siya. Okay, Heidegger strongly opposes the view that technology is a means to an end, okay, or a human activity. Now, but earlier, sabi ni Heidegger, no, it has an instrumental and anthropological point of view. How come this time, no, he he's contradicting those statements? Now, let's try to understand further ano bang ibig sabihin ni Heidegger doon. Now, they, according to Heidegger kasi, there's two approaches which Heidegger calls respectively instrumental and anthropological definitions are, they are somehow correct. philosophical view, no? You need to go deeper in order to understand their thought. So, uulitin ko, no? Heidegger, okay, again, uh, Heidegger opposes the view that technology is a means to an end or a human activity. Ano ba ibig sabihin niya to? Okay? These two approaches, which Heidegger called instrumental, Okay? And anthropological definitions are somehow correct. No, they are indeed correct. But, but the the reason why he says it's not it's because it's don't it doesn't go deep or it don't go deep enough as he says that are not yet true. Or yung aletheia na binabanggit niya. Now, unquestionably, Heidegger points that technological objects are for ends. Okay, are means for ends. Ibig sabihin niyan, sabi ni Heidegger, talaga namang yung mga Okay, technology, technology is ginagamit natin. We use them to kubaga, reach at a certain result, okay, reach at a certain uh, output, and are built and operated by human beings. But, okay, but the essence of technology is something else entirely. Just as the essence of a tree is not itself tree, Heidegger points out, so the essence of technology is not anything technological, okay? Technology, according to Heidegger, must be understood as a way of revealing. Ano ba tong revealing na to? Revealing is one of the terms that Heidegger developed himself in order to make it possible to think what according to him is not thought anymore. So Heidegger is just bringing us back. Okay, back to like okay. Heidegger is bringing us back to how we view tech, how we view okay nature before before we even look at how we view technology now. Because as I mentioned, I just just like how what Heidegger says, technology is now merely instrumental. Kubaga, it's just anthropological, but it doesn't go deep. Wala na yung appreciation, wala na yung respect, no, wala na yung love natin don sa nature, and and at some point we become destructive to our mother earth, okay? Now, in, in his translation of the Greek word aletheian or aletheia, okay, which means to discover or the truth, no? To uncover what was covered over. So we need this truth, according to Heidegger, in order for us to really go back to how we should view no, our nature. Now, if you... Uh, if we continue, no? according to him, technology embodies a specific way of revealing the world. Okay? Uh, a revealing in which humans take power over reality. Ano yung reality? That we have nature, that we have our environment, that we have our resources. And it is our role as human beings to be steward or tagapangalaga ng mga ng mga resources na ito. Well, the ancient Greeks experienced the making of something as helping something to come into being. Heidegger explains that analyzing classical text and words or modern technology is rather forcing into being. Ano ba ibig sabihin nito? Ang sabi ko nga kanina, no, we tend to look at the world now just like a raw material. A, a raw material to simply uh, achieve what we want. Okay? 
na di ba kapag isang bagay ang tingin mo lang sa kanya gamit so you're just going to utilize it according to how it should be no according to the function that we assign that particular thing let's say for example yung upuan no ang dahil nga ang ang purpose ng upuan o ang ang, ang tingin natin sa upuan is just simply merely an object to where we sit. So, yun lang ang tingin natin doon. We, we don't sometimes even care kung matumba yan o magasgasan yan. And that's how no, uh, uh, Heidegger allows us or, or knocks unto us that ang tingin na natin sa nature nyo is simply just a raw material. No, Regardless kung masira ito, regardless kung mawala ito, regardless kung uh, magkulang na ito, wala na tayong pakialam. Eh, alam nyo, that's the reality today. Diba? Uh, if we look at our environment now, grabe na ang pollution, grabe na ang scarcity, marami ng mga endangered species just to, you know, just to uh, achieve, no, yung ating, pa, just to, uh, para mapagbigyan lang yung ating mga pangangailangan. So, um, the reality now is wala na tayong pakialam. No, kung ano man ang mangyari sa mundo natin. I'm not saying not everyone, not all, but mostly according to Heidegger because of modern technology, ganun na yung view natin no, sa ating environment. And ang masaklap pa nun, we tend to manipulate, no, according to Heidegger, we tend to manipulate our environment, our resources in order to produce no, uh, ano yung mapagkakakitaan natin. Ngayon, ang tao... Alam nyo, uh, I've read some articles in relation to what we're talking right now. No, I've read some articles about those organizations who cover up their organizations na tila ba may pakialam sila sa environment, they love nature, they raise funds for nature. Pero alam nyo ba that these organizations are actually kubaga, uh, created by companies who are destroying our environment. So kubaga, it's a facade para ipakita na they actually para ipakita na may, mahal daw nila no ang environment ang mahal daw nila ang ating kalikasan mahal nila ang ating mundo pero sila talaga yung naninira sila talaga yung na umuubos at pumapatay sa ating resources and if you read several articles on the internet about that there are already a lot of researches no conducted about that so hindi lahat ng mga organizations na let's say may pakialam daw sa environment ay talagang totoo Okay. Now, according to Heidegger, if you look at the picture na nasa screen ninyo ngayon, you can see uh, a bridge no, uh, sa river and then yung power plant. Now, according to Heidegger kasi, yung old technology daw still respects nature as an object of autonomy. Alam yung sabihin no, that, that nature is uh, kubaga, an independent being, an uh, 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 valuable thing kubaga, that, that needs to be respected. Then, ganyan dapat natin ganyan daw tignan noon ng mga tao noon yung environment however today we simply look at the environment as an artificial source kubaga um kubaga we sabi ko nga we just utilize our resources for our personal gains at maraming mga tao na ganyan and today mas mahalaga ang kumita ng pera no kaysa talagang Ma, regardless kung masira na ang environment. Okay? And uh, kung titignan natin no, sa paligid natin ngayon, yung pagpapatayo ng iba't ibang mga subdivisions uh, actually led sa destruction ng mga farmlands and even yung mga fish ponds no, nawawala na. And because of that, lalong nagkakaroon ng scarcity sa pagkain. So, la, yung, kumbaga there is this ripple effect. No? We are developing, we are modernizing in terms of technology talagang gumaganda yung ating mga technology but if you simply look deeper no mas malaki yung uh, yung nawawala sa atin okay now the second definition of martin heidegger is technology is not a product of human activity ano bang ibig sabihin nito now according to heidegger there is something wrong with modern technological culture sabi ko nga the age of technology today just view our resources as simply raw material. Technology has become bigger than us. Ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Alam nyo kung titignan nyo din ngayon, there are so many cases and scenario wherein technology is overpowering us already. Have you ever felt, and there are a lot of studies nga about this, na may mga kabataan ngayon na sobrang lulong sa technology, um, the, sa computer. Ang original na purpose ng computer should be to help us in our, in our daily tasks, let's say as a student or as a teacher, sa encode, 
loading, sa computation, sa storage ng data. Pero now, no, because of, let's say, the onset or the prevalence of social media, like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and whatsoever, uh, kumbaga, and of course, nandiyan na rin yung iba't ibang mga gaming sites yung, uh, or, or games na, na available sa ating mga smartphones. Technology now has ruled over us. Na wala na yung dapat ang human beings ang nagro-rule over technology but without even noticing it ang technology na ang nagro-rule over us imagine niyo according to a a recent data a recent research na nabasa ko the average filipino please take note of this the average filipino uh, uses or, or stays on the internet for like 10 hours imagine niyo yun we only have 24 hours a day and halos kalahati na ng oras natin mga Pilipino ang nagugugol sa internet. And okay lang sana no kung nagagamit yon sa isang productive na bagay. Let's say, pag nag-aaral ka or kapag may ginagawa kang uh, sa, sa trabaho mo or you're accomplishing something very important or nag-research ka, well, that's, uh, that's essential. Pero kung nauubos ang oras mo sa tip, Talk. <laughs> Alam niyo, I know a lot of students na pag pumasok, lalo niyo mga sadyante ko, some of my students na na-observe ko, my dear students na na-observe ko sa ating klase, pag tinignan mo parang inaantok, inaantok lagi, hindi parang inaantok lagi, puyat na puyat, lutang, no? kapag nag-discuss si teacher, nakanganga, nakatingin sa labas, hindi nakikinig, ang, al, uh, ang, sa isip mo siguro, no, pwede na namin isipin as a teacher na wow, nag-aaral siguro to, naghanda siya, pero pagkatawagin mo na, wala siyang alam, nga nga. Pero at kung tatanungin mo yung reason, hindi daw siya makatulog kasi buong gabi nag, nanood ng mga TikTok videos or kagab, buong gabi may ka-chat or nanood ng K-drama or whatsoever. So we are at a time, no? our modern technology now has ruled over us and that's really dangerous. That's why the third definition of Heidegger about technology is that technology is the highest danger. I repeat, no, technology is not against technology. Sabi ko nga sa umpisa ng ating discussion, technology according to Heidegger is not good or bad, but it's how we abuse it and use it that really matters. Now, the danger is that humans will also interpret themselves as raw materials. So, today, sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, kubaga, we consume no, technology to consume us. Do you get my point in that particular statement? Ang nangyayari, technology na nag-rule over us. And kubaga ngayon, hindi na makatrabaho ang mga tao, hindi na tayo, parang hindi na daw, there are some people hindi na mabubuhay ng walang technology, no, na walang aircon, walang electric fan, walang ila. Well, those gives comfort, no? As those uh, give comfort sa ating everyday life. And it's true that technology has really uh, made our life easier. Pero, no, let's, let's always bear in mind that technology should not rule over us. Technology no, can actually lock, up, uh, lock us into a certain view na kapag hindi natin yun na, naiwasan, no, uh, it will become dangerous to us. Marami ng mga kabataan ngayon, even not only young people, but even adults na easily depressed, easily, that are easily angered. Uh, why? Because wala na yung mga connections ngayon. Unlike before, yung mga bata naglalaro sa labas, nag, naghahabulan, nagtutumbang uh, preso, they're playing a lot of games, there's interaction, but now, ang kaharap mo na lang, gadget. No? Sabi ko nga, uh, the average Filipino screen time is 10 hours, and that's really destructive. Now, according to Heidegger, the only way out is the will not to will. This is actually paradoxical. Kung titignan nyo, parang two opposite direction, no? You will, but you will not will. Ano kaya ibig sabihin ni Heidegger dito? According to Heidegger, we need to open up the possibility of relying to technology. Of course, no? Every day, we need technology. Like us teachers, we need technology para makapagturo sa inyo, makapag-record ng mga videos, makapag-search, uh, makapaghanda kami ng lectures namin sa inyo. But, but we should not become a slave of technology. Alam dapat natin yung hangganan natin. Alam natin yung limitasyon natin sa paggamit ng technology. Nowadays, a lot of people are, let's say, becoming obese, unhealthy. Kasi wala na, wala na exercise, nakaupo na lang lagi. Uh, nakatutok na lang sa monitor ng kanilang mga gadgets. And not only us, no, even students nowadays. So, 
this is a reminder from Heidegger that we should not become slaves of technology. We should, no? We should rely on technology, but not to the point that we will become slaves of technology. Okay? So please, my dear students, uh, may hangganan ang paggamit, no? Uh, we are responsible for our actions and we're responsible for maintaining our sanity, for maintaining a healthy life, and for setting limitations on how we use technology. And that's very, very important. Okay. Now, uh, in order for Heidegger to really explain no, uh, the, the, the onset or, or the production of technology, he actually made use of the word poesis. Now, Heidegger used the ancient Greeks' way of looking at causality to initially determine the essence of technology. According to Heidegger, there are four concepts. Okay, or of poesis. Um, by the way, when you say poesis, this is actually bringing forth. It is producing something. Okay. Now, what are these four causes of poesis according to Heidegger? Number one is causa materialis. If you look on your screen, uh, you can see there a chalice. Okay, right? So um, we will be explaining these four causes using this chalice. Now, the causa materialis is actually a material, okay, the raw material in which something is made up of. Okay, just, just listen to the definition and we'll be going to its application later on using that chalice. The cause of formalis, on the other hand, is actually the form of the material, how it looks like. Okay, cause of finalis is the purpose. Okay, what is it made for? Okay, what is the purpose of that object created? And cause of efficiency is the one which caused for the thing to be formed. Who created it? Okay, who created it? So, uh, in here, as you can see, the silver chalice will illustrate these four causes. Kabi ko nga, cosa materialis, this chalice is made up of silver. That's the raw material. Next, the form of the chalice, okay, its shape, that is the cosa formalis. And for the cosa finalis, uh, ano ba yung purpose ng chalice? It's actually used for religious traditions. Or in ancient times, it's also used when you want to uh, celebrate something, no? they, they use that to drink something, but mostly it's actually used for religious tradition. That is the purpose and that is the cosa finalis. Now for the cosa efficiency, naman, it is actually the silversmith. Yung mga gumagawa ng sword or gumagawa ng mga uh, object out of gold, out of silver and other uh, raw, uh, other materials, no? just like the chalice, we call that the silversmith. And that's actually the cosa efficiency. Again, cosa materialis, it's made of silver. Cosa formalis, the shape of the chalice, how it appears. Cosa finalis, it's the purpose. It's used for, let's say, religious traditions. And cosa efficiency, it's, it's made by the, or created by the silversmith. Okay, now these four causes are deemed to be responsible for bringing forth something. Remember, poesis actually means bringing forth. Now, poesis has two forms, okay? The bringing forth through an external influence and bringing forth that occurs naturally. So, natural occurrence and something that's made because of external force. Now, Heidegger characterized poesis as a kind of unveiling or revealing. Sabi ko kanina, aletheia, okay? The truth. Now, earlier, actually at the beginning, I mentioned ko na yung word na in framing. According to Martin Heidegger kasi, the process of revealing in modern technology is actually an in framing. By Heidegger, use the word in framing, which simply means putting into the frame okay, of modern technology everything in nature. So sabi ko nga, uh, as, as I've explained earlier, no, according to Martin Heidegger, yung uh, old technology natin, iba yung view no, ng mga tao noon sa sa nature as compared to uh, the modern technology that we have now. Okay, the frame of modern technology is a network of interlocking of things standing in reserve. Now, ang tingin na natin sa ating mga envir sa ating environment, sa ating nature, ay simply an object, a material that we manipulate to produce something. Let's say, for example, kanina na mention ko, yung forest, ang tingin na natin doon, it's a production of paper. No longer we view it as kubaga, an, an art, a work, or a blessing from God, or it, that it is something that we need to take care. It is actually the source of food, or the source of living, or the source of life, not only for human beings, but for animals. But now we look at the trees, not as a part of nature, or not as a blessing, but just simply a material to produce paper. 
Okay? I hope uh, that's very understandable naman, no? So, magkaiba na, no, yung view sa old technology at sa modern technology. Now, we are in a world where people has the power to manipulate things. Okay? And nawawala na yung essence, yung deeper essence ng ating uh, nature and environment. Now, as they say, tandaan nyo po ito, and I keep on mentioning this, we are the stewards. Tagapangalaga tayo no, ng creation na binigay sa atin ng ating Diyos. And that we should be grateful no, sa resources na to. For without these resources, saan tayo? Wala tayong kakainin, wala tayong gagamitin. Imagine nyo, no, I could still remember when I was young, <laughs> Hindi pa naman ako ganun katanda, but I'm sure some of you here, my dear students, could relate. No? Ang sarap, iba yung lasa ng tubig sa tubig poso. No? Yung pag kahit sobrang init, pag uminom ka doon, I just remember, kaya ko noon, nung bata ako, uh, kapag nauha ko, direkta akong iinom doon sa yung tubig poso, na kahit na may lumot, ewan ko, kahit may lumot yung sa may, ewan ko, kung napapansin yun, no? di ba may lumot naman talaga siya. Pero despite that, hindi ka nagkakasakit and, and ang lamig-lamig na iba yung iba yung lasa I couldn't compare it or I cannot describe it pero iba as compared to la- now imagine nyo uh, parang ironical na we are surrounded by waters uh, I mean we are surrounded by the body of water our country is an archipelago island surrounded by water but how come no na um, we we have mani- uh, mineral waters right now that is actually a proof na talagang ano na polluted ng ating mga water and remember ang drinking water or yung yung naiinom na tubig ay napakaliit na porsyento lang ng tubig na meron tayo sa buong mundo so we have to take care of our resources or else or else no we will reach a point wherein talagang ano ready din tayong mawala masira ma-destroy because of our carelessness and because of our wrong doings to nature So, uh, we should be the guardians of the creation. We are the guardians, the stewards of our environment. Now, to disregard this nature of reality is also putting ourselves at the brink of danger. Sabi ko nga, uh, imagine nyo na lang, no? I, I, I know na nararamdaman nyo to. Grabe ang inflation ngayon sa ating bansa. Why? Kasi yung resources kulang na. Imagine nyo yung sibuyas, nangyari sa sibuyas. Imagine nyo yun, sa siling, ano pa ba? Yung galunggong na dati isda ng masa. Ngayon, ano nang nangyari? So, nakakalungkot. No? And all of this is because of our carelessness. Lastly, because of man's arrogance, nature is in the verge of destruction. And that is very true. He thinks he knows how nature works and tends to hasten or expedite its processes. Now, we so much demand to nature, but we don't know how to take care of it. Um, you know, sabi nga, di ba, ang relationship, give and take. Kaso ang tao ngayon, ang mga tao ngayon, we tend to be very much greedy. No, we are so greedy. And uh, ang tingin na lang natin sa ating environment is simply a raw material. Remember, nature is beyond our control. Pag ang nature na galit, grabe. No? Imagine nyo yung mga nangyaring tsunamis, mga pagbaha, mga bagyo. Pag siningil tayo ng nature, sigurado din na talagang ikakapahamak natin. So we need to do something. Right now, my dear students, the very essence of this talk is for you to understand that technology should not rule over us, but we should rule over technology. Technology is not good or bad. It's how we use technology to make our life better, to take care of our environment, and to appreciate our environment all the more. And if we were, if we ever try to dominate Nature will surely revolt against us. Sabi ko nga, yung mga destructions, mga, suna, mga iba't ibang uh, dilubyo na nangyari sa atin, maniningil ang environment sa atin. Like uh, yung climate change, no, yung pagkatunaw ng yelo sa Arctic Ocean, ang dami-dami. Now, it's up to us on how we will take care of our environment. Remember, we are the guardians. We are the stewards of our environment. And we should do something habang hindi pa huli ang lahat. That's all for our discussion today. Thank you very much for listening. Please um, try to uh, reflect no, on your learnings for today's lesson and in even your simplest way, in your home, in your school, let's take care of our environment and let's contribute in making our world a better place for all of us. Thank you very much for listening and God bless everyone.